All right, so today we're gonna we're gonna look at uh, classes, which could also be interpreted as singleton type classes. If you're not familiar with that term, well, don't worry too much about it. Uh, we'll we'll get to it in just a little bit. Uh, so I'm just starting off in the new uh, Sprite Kit based project here. Doesn't really matter if it's Sprite Kit or not. Uh, what we're gonna do is uh, go ahead and create a new file. So get over here to file, new file, and it's just gonna be a new Swift file. And we are going to call it helpers because that's kind of the the main goal here. Some a class that will help you out. And um, I, I like to just drag these files back into here if they get uh, added up this way. So uh, first thing that we are going to do is we can leave in there uh, import uh, foundation. If you want, you could also import in uh, Sprite Kit if you are working with Sprite Kit. And then go over here and just write class helpers. So we're just repeating back the same name that we gave it. And what we can do from here is um, put in functions or variables that we want to be accessible from other classes. Now we don't have too many over here right now, but we can at least test with our game view control and our game scene class and access the data inside of our helpers class. And keep in mind that we're not gonna actually be making an instance of this class. We're, we're basically just working on the class itself. So it's not a copy of it. Uh, and, and the main point there is that uh, let's say we increment up a, a variable in this class. It's going to stay incremented up uh, whether or not we, you know, move over here to the game view controller or game scene uh, class, or, or even just hop around within the game scene class and, and just access it again and again. So let's uh, let's take a look at that, and it's uh, very simple. We're going to write in here a static, and then. Uh, variable or just var, sorry, and uh, we're gonna put in here. Let's say highest unlocked level, and you know initially you'd probably want that to be set at uh, at one. Now keep in mind we're not saving this to the NS user default. So for this particular example, you know maybe if the game got restarted or something like that, this is gonna go back to one. But just we're just messing around here. Okay, so go over to your uh, your game scene uh, class, and again this is just starting off with the template. So I'm just gonna just remove what's already in here and get rid of what's inside of the touches began. So, so uh, let's go into the touches began statement, and what we'll do is just write helpers and then highest unlocked level you can do a little plus plus after that and then let's just uh, print it out so we'll just take this right here put that right there and uh, now when we build the project every time we touch down we should increment that upwards Okay, so click down over here and you can see it started off at one and then we incremented it up. So it's just gonna go over this way. And then to just kind of prove this a little bit, let's um, let's go over here to our game view controller. And uh, before we even load up our scene, let's go ahead and just put in that same line. So then when we run this again and we touch down, it should start off at uh, three, right? Because we've we would have already incremented it from one to two. And then when we click down, there it is, it started off at uh, three and so on like that. Now, kind of a little interesting difference here. We, we don't play around with static variables too much in, in, um, in my lesson. So let's look at um, you know how you maybe traditionally do this uh, by declaring a variable here. Let's just put in here var uh, some number. Here, I'll actually specify that's an integer. I probably should have done that down there too. And we'll just uh, make this guy start off at zero. And what I wanna, Kind of prove is that if we come over here and we write helpers dot and you'll notice you know i'm not getting any options other here other than highest unlocked level i can't really get to you know that 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 variable i can't type in here some number it's going to give me let's see what it says instance member some number cannot be used on type helpers okay so basically that's the that's the big difference right there is that if you declare this static in front of it we can make use of it in uh, our other classes like so um, now you could actually get away with you know I'll bring it back you could actually get away with um, leaving it in there like that uh, but if you were gonna do this you'd actually have to make a singleton class uh, out of this helpers and, and which is fine you could write static let let's say shared instance equals helpers and then that's actually all you have to do you can come back over here to your game scene file and write helpers dot shared instance dot and you'll notice that immediately that some number shows up and uh, you could 
you know, certainly, certainly play around with it from there. Uh, so again, actually, we'll just leave that print statement in there and, and um, instead just print out the shared instance dot sum number. But uh, if you're like me, you're probably thinking, well, why would I do that one? You know, if I could just do the other one, right? Uh, and I think that's um, a perfectly valid point. <laughs> So let's undo that. Uh, we'll just uh, comment that out right there. And uh, let's go and look at uh, putting in here a function that um, basically a shared function among other all of your other classes. And I've used this example before uh, where we because this is a really useful one, basically uh, returning a UI color from a, a hex value. So uh, I'm going to again start off with static over here. I'm going to write func for function and then just put in here color from hex string and we'll put in here RGBA string and we're going to note that this is going to return a UI color. And you can also use this um, UI color and SK color. Which is like Sprite Kids version of UI color uh, can be used, you know, in the same exact places. So if you want to get an SK color, you can also just use the same function as well. And I'm not gonna. This isn't really. This is not gonna be a tutorial about uh, all the stuff that goes into this. So I'm just gonna go ahead and paste it all in, and I would implore you to just do the same thing. Uh, but uh, basically, we're just going to uh, feed into this function a hex value and. We can do that. Uh, quite uh, just starting off over here, we'll write uh, self dot background color is going to equal, and then we put in here helpers dot color from. Ooh, yeah, ooh. How come we didn't get it? Color from next string. Let's try that one more time. Maybe because I hadn't saved it yet. There it is, color from hex string. So there you go. Occasionally you do have to save, and uh, then we put in here, uh, starting with the uh, the hex hex symbol, and we'll just make this uh, full white. So if you noticed before, when we opened up the um, the simulator, it was a that default gray background, but now it is uh, white over here, and uh, that kind of <laughs> at least proves that that's working. Uh, let's play around a little bit more. So. Let's uh, let's do this. Let's come over to here, and we will test to see if um, the the highest unlocked level is a certain value, and then we'll um, transition to a new scene. Basically, we'll just transition to the same scene again. So we'll say helpers dot um, highest unlocked level that equals uh, five. So we've clicked down a few times. Uh, then what we're going to do is we'll set this back to being uh, zero again. We'll say that's going to be zero, and then we'll say if let scene equals game scene file named, and then that's just the SKS file that which matches game scene. If um, if we can create a new scene out of that, which we can, uh, then what we're going to do is just write self dot view dot present scene. And then you put it here, scene. And for the transition, we'll make use of our um, color function. And we're going to write over here sk transition dot fade with color. And then right in there, helpers dot color from hex string. And to kind of also prove that this is working, let's change out to a different color because otherwise you're not going to see a white fade over top a white background and we'll make the duration last an annoying let's say three seconds all right so we should be able to uh, click down a few times uh, nothing will happen but then after that something fun will happen so click down click down click down and then sure enough at uh, that fifth one you can see it transitions and then this should start back over at, at one again so if I click down again it's gonna be there you go. Well, actually, we, we set that back at zero. So the first time I click around, it's going to be one, two, and so on like that. So uh, there you go. That's um, that's how easy it is to uh, to set up a uh, some variables and functions that you can uh, access from anywhere. And of course, these don't have to be just limited to integer types. You could you could put in their string, put in there whatever you want.